I think we'll go with Erica first. Can you chat about um, what Goldman Sachs is doing right now and how is it making you feel? Sure, so um, first of all, Rona, thank you for inviting us to this panel. This is definitely like a family reunion and um, I appreciate being uh, with all of you today. Uh, and thank you for embarrassing me in your introduction. You were <laughs> successful with your objectives. So thank you for that. Uh, it's good to see everybody. Uh, the way I, I, I'll, I'll just give you guys the highlights of what it has been like uh, at Goldman Sachs over the last several months. Um, I think all of us are going through multiple pandemics. And first COVID and the you know economic crisis following COVID and then the racial crisis following the economic crisis following the global health crisis that was COVID. And we are still in a COVID environment, which I think people uh, forget. Um, so uh, at one point, 98% of our firm was working from home. Um, we started out dealing with anti-Asian sentiment when COVID was coming, uh, coming on and, uh, and the news media and references led to, I think, a substantial anti-Asian sentiment that was unacceptable. And we created a dialogue within the firm around what was going on in the Asian community and, and standing up and speaking out against racism. And we had no idea even what was to come. Uh, certainly as we uh, all went to sheltering in place and working at home and working remotely, uh, we put a lot of thought into what the DNI implications were whether or not we were thinking about caregivers, whether or not we were thinking about who was disproportionately impacted, who was requesting leave and why, and understanding the context for COVID and, and how we needed to be thoughtful about our people as they work from home and how we equip leaders to lead through challenging times um, and to develop empathy for people and people with different situations. Uh, knowing that there were some communities that were being disproportionately impacted and some individuals that had disproportionate uh, burden is a negative word, but you know, uh, responsibilities at home. And how do we think about managing inclusively? How do we help people set boundaries? How do we help people deal with crisis, lead through crisis? and manage you know, both personal responsibilities and professional responsibilities and still be evaluated and compensated fairly. And then the last thing I'll say is then the racial crisis hit. And um, I'm really proud of the way the firm uh, came together around the racial crisis, especially at a time when we all were geographically diffuse. This was truly, you know, the, the catalyst may have been spurred in the US, but we all felt it globally, we treated it globally, and we had a dialogue on race at Goldman Sachs and on the black race and systemic racism, unlike any uh, dialogue I've had in my 30 years working, uh, you know, in corporate organizations. Uh, the leadership started from the top I think our CEO very early on came out with his very clear statement against racism and discrimination with no mixed words. And what, what was not acceptable at Goldman Sachs. And, um, and that was, I think, also a, a point of pride for the folks at Goldman, you know, and, and made it okay to start talking about racism and discrimination and systemic racism in a meaningful way. Our black partners, uh, you know, were role models and told very personalized stories that made it okay for people to share personally. And again, I think a lot of empathy was built because black folks were telling stories that they never told before. And I think the deepening of the understanding of the black experience, no matter uh, what your education is, what your socioeconomic status is, where you live, where you work, what we have to face, what I have to say to my children every time they walk out the room or go to a certain neighborhood or drive their cars is very different than the experience of my peers. 
And through building that understanding and empathy, we built up tools and competencies around talking about race in the workplace. We, you know, created forums, not only internally, but externally with our clients. And now we're moving from having those forums and discussions into real actions and uh, some programming around reverse mentoring for our senior most leaders and allies for racial equity. So we will be, you know, we are rolling out a, an ally program specifically for racial equity. So uh, we've been doing a lot. I know that was probably a longer answer than expected. So y'all can skip over me for the next question or something. Um, <laughs> but I am proud of the work. I'm proud of the work my team has done. Um, we've come together across, you know, the global human capital management organization, but also really across every division. Our divisional leaders showed a lot of leadership on this topic. And, and, and our people have engaged, even at a time when we're just, we're not in the building together. And, but, you know, we're talking and we're moving forward. That's great. Thank you, Erica. I really appreciate it. And uh, I actually enjoyed every word.